Welcome to Christ the King Church, Shelby, North Carolina's Healing Center. Hi, I'm Melinda, Pastor Moore's daughter. Welcome to our broadcast. Relax and enjoy our teaching. I can just get to church and let one of those people lay their hands on me and pray for me, I'll get my healing. Amen. You'd be surprised how many more healings we'd see in this place. But we talk ourselves out of it. Well, they're just another person. Yes, but they're just another person that God can work through, and that's what He does. We're, we don't have the power within us to heal somebody, but we're a conduit that God works through people. He always does. He works through us to bring healing to other people. And see, that's what He's looking for, is just somebody who's willing to be used to bring healing to other members of His body. So if we would just learn to talk ourselves into healing rather than talking ourselves out of healing, then we would be able to see God do so many great miracles in this place more than what He's already done. Now we've seen some, but we're getting to a point where we're going to see a whole lot more and greater things than we've ever seen in this place. I'm telling you that right now. God's already told me that that's about to happen. Amen. He's not only told me, He's told a lot of people in this church. Right. That's about to happen. Yep. We're on the brink of it. And when it happens, it's going to shake this whole area right. of what God's going to do. But He's looking for people He can use. He's looking for people who will be faithful. He's looking for people that He can work through because I guarantee you when it starts, there's going to be people coming in here from all over that are looking for something that they've not been able to find anywhere else. Let's turn over now to Luke 8. I want to begin with verse 40. I'm going to actually begin at verse 41. It says, And behold, there came a man named Jairus. And he was a ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down at Jesus' feet and begged him to come to his house. For he had an only daughter about 12 years of age, and she was dying but as he went, the multitudes thronged him. Now verse 43 through about 48 is where the woman with the issue of blood is healed. So we'll skip down to verse 49. But now just stop and think about this. Here's this guy who's come to Jesus. His daughter is dying. He's come to Jesus for with a purpose. All of a sudden, though, there's an interruption. Now, how many of you know that a lot of times when you're really seeking after God, there can be times where there's an interruption. You think sometimes it's just not going to happen because there's an interruption. But we have to have the attitude here, what Jesus told Jairus in verse 49. Actually, in verse 50, but he tells him, but look at verse 49. While he was still speaking... Someone came from the ruler of the synagogue's house saying to him, Your daughter is dead. Do not trouble the teacher. You see, once again, they recognized Jesus as a healer, but once the daughter had died, they thought it was over. They still didn't recognize that he was not only the Lord of healing, but he was the Lord of resurrection. Verse 50, though, Jesus tells him. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Do not be afraid. Only believe, and she will be made well. Many of us have gotten bad reports from physicians. And you know what we tend to do? Well, it's all over. That's only the beginning. Because that's just a report of a man. God's got the final word. Amen. And you don't stop there and listen to that and say, well, it's all over. No, it's not. That's just the beginning. That's where God, when things are impossible with men, is when God begins His work. When it looks impossible, that opens the door for God to show up. Amen. And you see, here it was. They said, your daughter's dead. Don't bother him anymore. Well, she was alive, they said, well, he can come and heal her. But once she was dead, they're like, well, it's all over. 
But Jesus says, look, don't be afraid. Only believe and she'll be made well. Verse 51, when he came into the house, he permitted no one to go in except Peter, James, and John, and the father and mother of the girl. Now, why do you think that was? You know, there's times where you have to surround yourselves only with people who have faith and believe the way you do. There's times you don't need to tell people what you're even trusting God for because you don't need to listen to their negativity. You need to make sure you surround yourself with people who believe the way that you do. And there's times you just need to be sure you don't even mention to people what you're trusting God for unless you know they're on the same page with you. Because they'll start talking negativity. I, I had um, I heard of a, a young lady just recently who ended up passing away. She was trying to believe God for her healing, but her mother, from the moment that she was diagnosed, spoke death to her the whole time. And she ended up dying. Can you believe that? Her own mother spoke death to her from the moment that she was diagnosed. You know, that's where we've got to learn. We've got to stand with one another and believe God. It's not over till God says it's over. So Jesus had to put everyone else out. He knew... <coughs> He knew who he could bring in. And see, he only brought in three of the twelve. Peter, James, and John. The inner circle. The ones he knew he could pretty well depend on. He didn't even bring the others in. And then he brought in the mother and the father of the girl. Because he knew they were going to really be hopped up with faith. Because they really wanted their daughter alive. But he couldn't trust anybody else. He had to get rid of all of them. Or again, you know, you got to be careful who you let pray for you. You got to be careful who you let lay hands on you. You got to make sure where their head is because you don't want everybody laying hands on you unless you know where they are. So he put them all out. Verse 52 Now all wept and mourned for her, but he said, Do not weep. She's not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him, knowing that she was dead. But he put them all outside took her by the hand and called, saying, Little girl, arise. Then her spirit returned, and she arose immediately, and he commanded that she be given something to eat. And her parents were astonished, but he charged them to tell no one what had happened. Now again, they were believing him for healing, but they didn't believe it till they saw it, that he was Lord of Resurrection. Now, I want you to go with me. This is where I've been trying to get you. I wanted to kind of set it up. We want to go to John chapter 11. John chapter 11. This is, I think, one of the greatest stories of what Jesus did. John chapter 11. We're going to begin with verse 1. And I'll probably try to make this, try to go through it as quickly as I can. I want to point out a few things, though. John chapter 11, verse 1. Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Now that doesn't make any sense in the natural. You know he was sick, but he stayed two more days. Now see, he's got a point. He's got a reason for that. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let's go to Judea again. Now the disciples said to him, Rabbi, Lately the Jews sought to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble, 
because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. These things he said, and after that he said to them, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. Then his disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he'll get well. However, Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought he was speaking about taking rest and sleep. Then Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Now listen to the disciples. This is kind of humorous. Then Thomas, who is called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go that we may die with him. They just thought that Jesus was going to go there and they were going to get all stoned and killed and that was going to be it. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away. And many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Now verse 25 is a critical verse. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God who is to come into the world. And when she had said these things, she went her way and secretly called Mary, her sister, saying, The teacher has come and is calling for you. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the town, but was in the place where Martha met him. Then the Jews who were with her in the house and comforting her, when they saw that Mary rose up quickly and went out, followed her, saying, She's going to the tomb to weep there. <clears throat> then when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. And look at verse 36. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? See, again, they kept seeing him as one who could perform miracles of healing. But it was too late. Lazarus was already dead. They could not see past death. They couldn't see that Jesus had the power over death as well. Even though he'd already done these other miracles already, he'd already raised this young man who had died. He'd already raised the little girl from the dead. And yet they still didn't realize that Jesus was the Lord of resurrection as well. Then Jesus, again groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. And Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there's a stench, for he's been dead four days. You see, she still didn't get it. He's dead. There's nothing you can do, Lord. What are you going to do? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead man was lying, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you've heard me. And I know that you always hear me because of the people who are standing by. I said this. They may believe that you sent me. Now when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had died came out bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Loose him and let him go. He proved again that he was Lord of resurrection. Now, why do I say to you that he's 
that I title this, Come Out of the Graveyard. Because just as Jesus is Lord of Resurrection, where He actually raised people from the dead, Jesus is wanting to raise things that you've declared are dead. He wants to resurrect those things in your lives. Some of you have said, My children are just not going to serve God. They're too far gone. Jesus wants you to know He's the Lord of Resurrection. Don't, you, you buried your children and you put up a tombstone and said they're never going to serve God. And He said, come out of that graveyard. Your children will come back and serve Me. He's saying, you've had dreams. You've thought, I, I've got, I had this dream, but I'm, I'm too old. Or too many things have happened and this dream is never going to take place. But Jesus is telling you, come out of the graveyard you're never too old. It's never too late. Your circumstances are never the limitation. I'm resurrecting those dreams in your life. Don't allow those things to be dead because I'm resurrecting those things in your life. Just stop and think about it. Think about Joseph. Joseph had a dream that his, his brothers... And his, even his father were going to come and bow down before him. He saw it in the spirit. But everything in the world happened. His brother sold him into slavery. He was at Potiphar's house and accused of something that he, he never even did and ended up in prison. But you know what? He never let the dream die. And before long, he was exalted, second only behind Pharaoh. He was in control of the entire land of Egypt. At that time, the greatest kingdom of all the world. And he was number two. And he lived to see his brothers and his father come and bow their knees before him. And he knew that God had set that all up, and he lived to see that dream take place there was a big delay remember I told you that there's times where there's an interruption just stop and think he could have given up there was a long interruption there bad things sold into slavery by his own brothers thrown into prison for things he didn't do and left in prison for a long time that was a big interruption but all of a sudden the dream that God had put in his heart came to pass Amen. God's put dreams in some of your hearts, and you think they're never going to come to pass, that they're dead. But Jesus wants you to know tonight that He's the Lord of resurrection, and He's raising up those dreams, and they shall come to pass. Hallelujah. It may seem like it's taken a long time, it may seem those things are dead, but they're not dead. There may have been an interruption, but they're coming to life. There's been times in my own life where I've said, Lord, do you not realize that you put some dreams in my, in my life? You've given me dreams, and do you not realize how old I'm getting? And I feel like I'm almost too old to fulfill those things. And he keeps telling me, yeah, I know how old you are. Don't worry about that. Do you realize how old Moses was? Moses was in his 80s when God started using him. Do you remember how old Caleb was? Caleb was 80 years old when God started using him. And Caleb was able to say, Lord, I'm just as strong now as I was when I was a young man. And he said, you give me that mountain where all those giants are, I'm going to go take it. And he did. <clears throat> when God gives you a dream, he's going to give you whatever you need to see that dream fulfilled. And he'll make sure it comes to pass. And I've had to say, Lord, yes, I know. If you've given it to me, it will come to pass. And it doesn't matter how old I am or how much I think I'm not able to do it anymore. You're going to make sure it comes to pass. You're going to give me the strength. You're going to give me the wisdom. You're going to give me the, the, the abilities to do it and see it come to pass. And I'm telling you, that's not just for me. That's for all of you. I know people in this church who've seen their children go by the wayside and they say well it looks like they're never it's never going to happen they're never going to come back and serve God 
Well, I'm just telling you, Jesus says, you hold on to what I've told you in the Word. The Word says, train up a child in the way that they should go. And when they're old, they'll not depart from it. They may, there may be an interruption. They may stray. But eventually, God's going to bring them all back. God is not a man that He should lie. And that's what the Word says. Now, it doesn't say that it's always going to be a smooth path and there's not going to be interruptions. But it's going to happen. Amen. So keep holding on to what the promises that God has given you, the dreams that He's given you. There's things that took a whole lot longer in my life. And I sometimes say, Lord, I don't understand why it took so long. And some of them still haven't happened. And I'm like, Lord, I don't understand why it's taken so long. If you'd have done this 20 years ago when I was a much younger man, it would have been a whole lot easier. And sometimes they'll tell me, yeah, but then you would have thought it was you and it wouldn't have been me. So, you see, there's reasons why a lot of this stuff is that way. He wants to show us that it's not in our abilities, but it's in His abilities. But hold on to the dreams. Come out of the graveyard. Don't allow those things that you've buried, don't allow them to stay there. Let Jesus resurrect all those dreams that you've had. If He's given them to you, He gave them to you for a reason. Because He's going to bring them to pass. He wants you to keep those things alive in you until He brings them to pass. Quit erecting tombstones on things that Jesus says are still alive. That's what we tend to do. We want to put up a tombstone saying, it's dead, it's never going to happen. Some people say, my marriage is dead. Some people have said that in the past. Never going to work. It's dead. And I'll tell you, there's some marriages that needed to be dead. Sometimes we married the wrong person and got out of the will of God. But there's others where God has done it. And I'll tell you, you guys know it. Marriages can be rough. They're not easy. Even when you marry the right one, they're rough. There's ups and downs. And there's issues and things you've got to deal with. Jerry was talking about the other, the other evening. They celebrated 50 years. Carl and I have celebrated 45 years not too long ago. It's always, it's always not been easy. You got, it takes work. If you want to make a marriage work, it takes work. That's right. And even, like I say, even when you know this is the one that God joined you together with, it still takes work. But you've got to keep that dream alive and say, Lord, I know that this is the one you joined me with, and whatever it takes, we're going to work it out. We're not going to allow other people, we're not going to let circumstances or issues or things like that to tear us apart. Because believe me, the devil would love to tear godly marriages apart. Because when he can tear marriages apart, he can tear the church apart. So there's all these things that are going on. There's all these things that some of us have erected tombstones. And you know, the definition of a tombstone is really that thing of between, you know, you're here between a rock and a hard place. That's what a tombstone is. That's really between a rock and a hard place. Quit putting up tombstones on things that God says are not dead. Don't give up on your dreams. If God's giving you a dream and giving you a vision, don't give up on it. Keep it alive. Keep striving. Keep going forward. God has given it to you for a reason. I know I'm repeating it, but I want you to get it. God's given it to you for a reason. And He's going to bring it to pass. Jesus is the Lord of resurrection. And a lot of these things that we think are over and done, He's resurrecting them in our lives right now. And He's telling us, don't say, is, it's too hard for God. No, God says, is there anything too hard for me? Well, we know the answer, that's no. Don't allow the bad reports of the enemy, don't let the bad reports of a physician don't let the bad reports of other people convince you 
and it's time to put up a tombstone. That's when you need to push back and say, no, this is something that God's given me. I'm not going to allow this to die. This is something God's given me, and the Lord of resurrection, even though it may have been interrupted, it may have been delayed, it's not dead. God is bringing all this back to life. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome to follow us on Facebook, YouTube, our website, or if you're local, follow us on Spectrum Cable, Channel 9, 7 p.m. on Tuesdays. Our Lord is building His kingdom. Join us in helping our Lord harvesting souls for His kingdom. Thank you for watching Christ the King Church, Shelby, North Carolina's Healing Center. Visit our website, www.ChristTheKingShelby.org and check us out on Facebook and YouTube. Join us on Spectrum Cable Channel 9 on Tuesday at 7 p.m.